I think like a lot of collectors in these types of hobbies, model railroaders get a special thrill from hearing the USPS or UPS or FedEx truck or whatever. We like that dopamine hit because we know something that we ordered is coming to us and we are going to enjoy it. Normally we can patiently wait for these things, but once in a while, no matter what our better nature is, sooner or later when we hear that truck pull up, well, our reaction is more like this. And usually what's coming in that truck is something that we've considered one of our holy grails. Yes, the particular piece of model railroading that we've been looking for forever and we're lucky enough to finally found it. Actually, I have a lot of holy grails, so I'm going to be talking about one of those today. Yeah, it's one of the first ones I think I've really gone on a search for and had a lot of difficulty finding, but doggone it, I finally found it. So let's get to talking about that and I'll get started on it in just a second. So hold on. Today's episode is brought to you by Pet Assistance First Aid Kits. If you're like me, you love your pet. You take them with you if you can, certainly care for them a ton at home. But just remember that no matter where you are, you are your pet's first responder. Like it or not, you are your pet's first line of care and perhaps only line of care. They depend on you to make sure that they stay happy and healthy. And the people at Pet Assistance have made sure to create a product that will help you do just that. With the help of veterinarians, the Pet Systems First Aid Kit is a 60 plus piece first aid kit that comes in this handy carrying case. It's a soft carrying case that is meant to be as light as possible. The entire thing fits easily in your car or in any kind of suitcase you're going to use during your travels. The kit contains many bandages and wraps of all sizes for your pet. And it also contains things such as cleaning solution, Q-tips, combs, lancets, and a dog whistle. Here's a list of all the things included with the kit and hopefully you will find it useful as I have. Remember pet assistance for the first line of defense for your pet. So in Switzerland exists this interesting grocery store. It's actually a co-op and here's one of the commercials from it. I've never been there because I've never been to Switzerland. But what's interesting to me is, as an American, I would expect this to be pronounced co-op, but it's actually pronounced... Yeah, it's actually pronounced cope and not co-op or coop, which would make sense to me too, but this is going to become important a little bit later. Well, at least important to me, that is. And it's not just a grocery store. It actually has a department store named Cope City. And Cope City, I guess you can, you can buy a lot of stuff there. There's also Cope Pronto plus Cope Building and Hobby rebranded to this Jumbo. So I guess they bought Jumbo out or something and then they just rebranded all that stuff to Jumbo. And they also have a restaurant, which actually looks pretty tasty, but I, I can't quite tell. I think a lot of times it's within the department store or within the grocery store. And I don't know if any one of these is standalone but here's some of the food that people have listed from the Cope restaurant. Looks good. Lots of pastries, fresh fish. Uh, oh my good, wait, what is that? My goodness, it's mammoth. It's massive. I don't know what kind of fish that is, but wow. All right, so this family said the husband was more of a meat and potatoes guy and she preferred fresh veggies and they both could be happy there. I'm not sure if I'd be happy married to anyone who preferred fresh veggies, but Pierce people like it. Well, anyway, the point of all this is Cope uses the railroads in Switzerland heavily for both advertising and for shipping. But in reality, it goes much deeper than that. In 2010, Cope as a group bought out the company Railcare. The Railcare the transport to the filialen in the Stadt ab 2025 will revolutionieren. Die Waren sollen ab dann nur noch per Zug in die Stadt kommen und nur noch das letzte Stück per Lastwagen transportieren. So yeah, Cope basically purchased their own rail line so that they could ship their stuff around more easily. In fact, they want to ship basically everything by train since it's the most efficient and it also has the least carbon impact, according to them. 
So yep, this retailer bought their own intermodal transportation company just so they could ship their stuff more easily and in style. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. I mean, Walmart doesn't run their own trains for crying out loud. So I wanted to put together a cope train. And as you saw from the photographs, there are a lot of options to build a cope train, but I wanted to start with this one here. And yes, this is a real locomotive in real life. This one's made by the Swiss company Hag. It's kind of an interesting company. Their stuff is super premium priced. I'm not quite sure if the quality of their stuff is up to that super premium price, but you don't have a choice. If you want some stuff from Switzerland, a lot of times Hag is the only one that sells it. And I bought the DCC sound version, and this one is AC, and there's a reason why this one is AC. As you can see, it's French on one side and German on the other. I think Switzerland has four national languages, right? But I guess these are the two that count. And there is a guy in it, which I really appreciate. Rocco and Hag seem to be the ones with guys. If you look, actually, the interior details are very nice. Uh, I mean, they look very good, but these are expensive if, you, <laughs> if you're going to buy Hag. Both my German and French are pretty garbage, but I'm pretty sure what all this stuff is saying on the side is that they're committed to being a company that protects the environment. And I'm fairly sure that COPE has a zero carbon footprint model that they're going for here. So that's, that's what all that stuff says in essence. Again, here's more of the details. I think again, Hag does a great job. I have a number of Hag locomotives. This is probably my most recent one. A lot of my other Hag locomotives are older. So maybe I have about five of them, but they're all pretty pricey even on the used market. As far as the stuff it's gonna haul around, the reason why I got an AC version is because I purchased this set and it's Marklin AC and I didn't wanna switch out the wheels. But anyway, I don't have quite as many Marklin AC locomotives and freight cars and passenger cars. So I figured it'd be better to try to fill that side of the things up. So as you can see, these look just like the ones in the photographs. Here we go, cope, and they're all nicely colored. Very, very cool. And um, you can actually, there are rail care locomotives. If you would rather buy the rail care locomotives and have these pull, but I actually wanted a cope locomotive. Part of the issue is there's just no cheap cope things at all. These are fairly expensive and I opted just to get one set of these and one set only. Um, but the reason why is because there is something else I wanted to add to this cope train. And that thing is the cope rail shop, which I so badly want to call the co-op rail shop because it just sounds so much better. I just have to fight not seeing co-op rail shop every single time. But you know, my sense of symmetry aside, the history of this is pretty interesting. And what in effect the Cope rail shop was, was a convenience store on rails. In order to begin, they purchased two X McDonald's rail cars, and I'll talk about those in another video and outfitted them with shelves and everything you need for a convenience store, including a area where you could heat up food. The rail shop was designed to be a miniature Cope Pronto, which is their brand of convenience stores. Although I'm going to make the brash assumption that they would not sell you gasoline there. The rail shop was gonna ride along with inner city trains going from Bern to Zurich and back. That's one of the busiest routes in Switzerland. It takes about an hour to make that ride. The service began on May 29th, 2000 and was designed in part to advertise and promote Cope's new logo and branding. It would hope that the service would continue at least through the end of Expo 02. Dolph Berger, the head of the rail shop project, said there were three stated goals for the rail shop. The first was to meet perceived passenger demand. The second was to provide a convenient one-stop shop for customers riding the rail. And the third was to provide that Cope was a company on the move, which I guess it literally was here. The belief was that the rail shop would serve about 600 customers per day and Cope hoped that the 600 customers would all spend about an average of 15 francs per person. Or wait, was that each person would buy 15 francs when they visited? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's gonna be spend 15 francs per visit. I mean, it was a Cope, right? Not an AM, PM for crying out loud. Cope stated that they wanted the rail shop to be in service until the end of the exposition, which looks like it was supposed to be around October of 2002. But I got the sense that if it worked well, they were gonna try to keep it going for longer. 
On average, it appeared that the rail shops employed about five to six people each, so that's about 10 to 12 people total. From what I understand, these things were scheduled to be on weekday only trains during peak hours. In mid-August of 2002, Cope announced that even though the cars were quite popular, they planned to close them in mid-December. It seems that the traffic was about what they expected, but the amount of revenue per person was slightly less. Therefore, they were going to stick with their original plan and close them after the end of Expo 02. I think they may have been pulled out of service after the run on December 17th. Well, you've probably figured out by now that the Holy Grail is in fact the co-op rail shop. Now, I've actually owned one of these and I bought the Roco version, but stupid me didn't realize that the Roco version was N gauge and I don't run that scale. Only HAG makes it an HO scale. I had looked for this thing forever and one of them finally came up on the US eBay, but doggone it went for over $350. I'm like, ugh, no thanks. So finally I got frustrated and just threw out a query on a Facebook group about modeling Swiss railroads and two people responded that they would help me find one. One actually had them because he was a toy store in Singapore of all places and another person was kind enough to help me look on Ricardo and I can't purchase on Ricardo as someone who doesn't live in Switzerland. So I was able to get help from these two people and I appreciate it greatly. Both of them were AC, which is perfect, and the one from Singapore is actually new old stock. I don't actually know when they manufactured these. It was quite a while ago, probably over a decade ago. So, yeah, new old stock is really wonderful. I mean, <laughs> have some guy that had these things um, sitting around, excellent. But uh, boy, they're nice. So here's a quick look at the instructions. Very cool, right? But we want to get to the thing itself so let's go ahead and pop it out of here and wow look at that the one nice thing about hag is they have very very good pad printing there's no doubt about it and of course all their cars and everything just feel really hefty really solid and look at that it is the rail shop in the flesh very very cool so there's no slider on it and no electrical contacts right out of the box and that's okay i guess there's probably not a whole lot you can do there are very few windows in here versus the mcdonald's which has a ton of windows but maybe i'll light it it's pretty easy to get a hag slider or actually to modify a slider from another company and put it on there so we'll see how that goes but as you can see most of the um, cope rail shop windows are blocked out and you saw that on the video as well so not really a whole lot to see anyway so I'll probably just leave it like that. Here's the second one that came from Switzerland. Thank you so much, Renee, for this one. And I, yeah, it's very cool. And I did want to, there were two in real life, but when I run these around the track, pretty sure I'm gonna put them on the Cope train. So you can see both sides of them when they're running around. But I will run one end consist during the, um, both the wrap up here and the running session. So you can see what both look like. I actually have a list that I maintain that I update all the time, and the link to that list is in the description if you want to help me find more stuff. I hope, uh, you know, there are difficult things to find, but I don't know if they're quite as difficult to find as these for what it's worth. But they're down there, and if you could help me out, that'd be great. And the list is continually updated on that same link. You never have to have a new link to a new list. It continually updates itself. So, hey, what kinds of things are you looking for? What are your holy grails in model railroading? I really want to find out. And, you know, if you post it down in the comments, uh, someone might be able to see it and they may be able to help you out. You never know where you might be able to find your holy grail and be able to show it off for all your friends and family. And me. I'd appreciate it if you smash that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't. If you want to see more interesting, I don't have a huge subscriber base, but somebody must be interested in this kind of stuff, right? Also, if you really want to help me pay the bills, why don't you take advantage of the links and coupon that are down in the description. Maybe you'll see something that you want to purchase. Alrighty. Well, hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, I will see you a bit later. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. I'll get back on track a little bit with some of these repair videos. Had to go out of country for a little while, so it took me a little bit of time to get back into a groove, but I'll do so now. And I will try to get to some of your requests as well. So take care, stay safe, happy model railroading, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.